All right, this is section 7.4 for exponential algebra. We are going to look at a few more properties of exponents. Our first one here, we're going to look at using and applying exponent rules for raising a term to a power. All right, we have 4 to the 5th and then squared. That means we're taking a power to another power. And squaring means we multiply something by itself. So we have 4 to the 5th times 4 to the 5th. But we learned yesterday that when we have the common base, in this case of 4, we can add the exponents. So 5 plus 5 is the same as saying 5 times 2, and that would give us 4 to the 10th power. Second example, we have 3 to the 6th, and then we are cubing it. Cubing means we have three of those expressions, and the bases are all threes, so we can add all of those exponents together. And 6 plus 6 plus 6 is the same as 6 times 3, or 18. So we end up with 3 to the 18th. Our third example, 5 to the 8th to the 4th power. So again, we have four of those expressions, 5 to the 8th. We can add our exponents, since our bases are the same. And adding 4 eighths together is the same as 8 times 4. So we have 5 to the 32nd power. Now, obviously, we don't want to have to write this out every single time. So look at See if you can figure out a shortcut. What are we doing with our powers to get that number? All right? And the answer is we're multiplying them. So if we have a base to a power to another power, we simply multiply the powers together. All right. So on your packet, you have this as your rule. In words, we are going to say we multiply the exponents. And one of our examples, we could say something like 4 cubed squared would be 4 to the 6th power. All right, and then the second property that we're going to look at is what happens when we raise a product to a power. This time we have several things inside parentheses all being raised to a power, and inside those parentheses is multiplication. That's what we mean by a product. All right, product is you are multiplying. If we have 3 times n, the whole thing squared, that means we have 3n times itself. Now we can separate that. It's all multiplication. It's 3 times n times 3 times n. So we can rearrange those things and put all threes together first, and then our n's together in the second one. And that is the same as saying 3 to the second power. We're multiplying it by itself, and n to the second power. Our second example, we have 2x, that quantity being cubed. That means we have three of these products. We can rearrange them and put our twos first. 2 times 2 times 2 is the same as 2 cubed x times x times x is the same as x cubed. All right, so again, we are looking for a shortcut so that we don't have to write this out every time. We have the quantity ab to the second power. That means we're multiplying it by itself, which means we have two a's being multiplied and two b's being multiplied. So our shortcut here is basically that that exponent has to be applied to both pieces inside. The, both parts of that product. So we're going to have a to the mth power times b to the mth power. All right, so in your packet, in words, raise each factor to the power. This is your rule. And for an example, let's say we have 4 times x to the fifth power. We want to take 4 and raise it to the fifth power and x and raise it to the fifth power. All right, let's practice a few of these. Uh, our directions here say write the simplified form and to remember, don't leave any negative exponents. All right, so our first example, we have x to the third to the fourth. 
This goes back to the first property that we looked at today, which says if we have a base to a power to another power, we are going to multiply the powers together. So we were going to get x to the 12th power. Our second question refers to our last property where we have a power outside of a product. We need to distribute that to both parts, which means we're going to have p squared to the fifth and we are going to have q to the fifth. Now in this first part, we go back to our first property, which says a power to another power needs to be multiplied. So our final answer would be p to the 10th times q to the 5th. All right, example 3. Very similar to example 2. We need to distribute that power to both pieces. The first piece, this m, already has a power, which means we need to multiply those powers together. So we are going to have m to the negative 8 and n to the 4th. But remember, we can't leave negative exponents. And if you think back a few days, we talked about negative powers causing us to take a reciprocal. So m to the negative 8 is equivalent to turning that upside down and putting m to the positive 8 in the denominator. Our n to the 4th does not have a negative exponent, so it would stay in the numerator. All right, example 4. We have lots of y's here. We do have this negative 1 power out here. So let's go ahead and distribute it in. Notice it does not apply to that y to the third. All right, that's outside of those parentheses. So multiplying it to the y to the negative 2 would give us y to the positive 2. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. And then we have y to the negative 1 power. Now, since all of those bases are y's, we can add the exponents together. So we are going to end up with y, 3 plus 2 is 5, plus a negative 1 would be 4. All right, example 5. Let's break it into two parts, since we have two powers outside here. The square is applying just to the end of the fifth. We multiply those exponents, so we have n to the tenth. In our second half here, we have th three different pieces. We have a 4, an m, and an n, all being cubed. So we have 4 to the third, we have m to the third, and we have n to the negative 2 times 3. All right, now simplifying. We can figure out 4 cubed. It's small enough. 4 times 4 times 4 would give us 64. Now the m's, there's only one piece. We have m to the third, so there's nothing to combine there. But notice here that we have two different n pieces, and we always want to put those together. So in this case, we have a base to a power times the same base, right? They're both n's, to another power. So we add our powers. 10 plus negative 6 would be 4. All right, and our sixth example here, notice that we have this piece at the end here all to a zero power. So what started out looking kind of complicated actually is fairly easy since all of this raised to the zero power is going to equal a 1. And multiplying by 1 isn't going to change your answer. So we really just have to deal with this part. So we have 2m quantity to the negative 6. We want to distribute that power to both pieces. And since they both have negative exponents, they are going to flip and do the reciprocal. So we're going to have 1 over 2 to the 6th and m to the 6th. Now, we can figure out 2 to the 6th. Again, it's a fairly small number. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 64 m to the 6th. All right, our next example. It says write a simplified expression for the area of the square. Now notice these tick marks. That implies that all sides are the same length. So when we look at this square, we have one side that's 5x cubed. This side would also be 5x cubed. 
And when you find the area of a square, you are taking side times side. So we have 5x cubed times 5x cubed. We can simplify that a little bit. The 5 times 5 would give us 25. The x cubed times the x cubed. We have the same base x, so we can put those together. And then we simply add the exponents, so x to the 6th. All right, our last example, it says the expression 1 half mv squared gives the kinetic energy in joules of an object with a mass of m kilograms. All right, so the first thing we are told is this is mass. Traveling at a speed of v meters per second. So this is our speed or velocity. It says what is the kinetic energy of an experimental unmanned jet that has a mass of 1.3 times 10 to the third kilograms traveling at a speed of 3.1 times 10 to the third meters per second. So the first thing, when you are given a formula, all right, we're told kinetic energy equals one half mv squared. We always want to take those variables and substitute in a quantity for each one. So let's rewrite this. We have a mass and a velocity squared. And I left it fairly large there, empty spaces, so that we can substitute in our quantities that we're given. We are told we have a mass of 1.3 times 10 to the third. We have a velocity of 3.1 times 10 to the third. Now, order of operations says that we need to deal with this exponent first, all right? So we are going to square the two pieces that are inside. That means 3.1 gets squared and 10 to the third gets squared. Now the 10 to the third, we can simplify that as squared, sorry, as 10 to the sixth, a power to a power. And 3.1 squared, 3.1 times 3.1 is 9.61. All right, so we have simplified the square part. All right, now we need to do some multiplication. We have a 1 half, we have a 1.3, and we have a 9.61. All of those are those front numbers. And then we have our tens. We have a 10 to the third, and we have a 10 to the sixth. The 10, since our base is the same, can be, we can just add those powers. That is 10 to the 9th. Now let's grab a calculator. Let's take 1 half or 0 0.5 times 1.3 times 9.61. We should end up with 6.2465 times 10 to the 9th. All right, so in your notes package, you have a section for a summary. We had two properties today. Make sure you're writing a statement that deals with taking a power to a power. All right, talk about what that equals, how we simplify that. And then also, how do we do a product where we're multiplying two pieces together and raising it to a power? And then make sure you rate yourself on that scale of 0 to 4. Your homework assignment is worksheet 7.4.